Hello, my name is Lewis and welcome to Gathering the Magic. Today we're looking at a $30 budget Mr. Orfeo the Boulder deck tech. From Streets of New Capenna, this 2-4 Rhino Warrior says whenever you attack, double target creature's power until end of turn. This deck is super rampy, getting that mana as quick as possible to get out those big, powerful creatures, then using every which way to power through to kill your opponents and get that victory royale. Now, let's get into the bouldery brew. I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. As always, we're starting off this deck tech hot with all of that ramp. First up, our creatures, Elena Kessig Trapper, that you can tap to add an amount of mountain equal to the greatest power among creatures you control that ETB this turn. And Wood Elves, that when ETBs, search your library for a forest card, putting that onto the field. There's Cultivate and Kadama's Reach to both search your library for two basic lands, putting one into your hand and the other onto the battlefield tapped. We've got Far Seek to search your library for a mountain or swamp, putting it into play tapped, and Rampant Growth to search your library for a basic land, also putting it onto the field tapped. There's Grow from the Ashes to search your library for a basic land card, putting it onto the field. If it was kicked, you search your library for two basic lands, putting them both onto the field. And this is Pilgrimage to search your library for two basic forests, putting one on the field tapped and the other into your hand. If you have two or more instant and or sorceries in your graveyard, search your library for three basic forests instead of two. We've got Harrow that makes you sack a land to cast, but lets you search your library for two basic lands, putting them onto the field untapped and Golgari Signet to pay one tap and add that Golgari mana. Continuing that trip to Signet City, we have both Rakdos and Gruul Signet to both do exactly the same for their respective colours. We've got Arcane Signet to add one mana of any colour and Mr. Orpheo's colour identity. And finally, we have Soul Ring, because Soul Ring. Before we get on to number nine, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe down below for all things MTG. Subscribing is completely free to do and it helps our channel grow and grow. You can also help support us by becoming a prickly pal today and becoming a channel member. You love to see it. After we've gone super rampy, we're playing huge creatures to smash face with. First on up is Aggressive Mammoth, a huge 8-8 with Trample that also gives other creatures you control Trample. And Freelance Muscle that whenever attacks or blocks, it gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the greatest power and or toughness amongst other creatures you control. There's hasty Rubble Belt Rioteers that similarly when attacks, it gets plus X plus naught until end of turn, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. And Tuya Bear Claw, which does the same as Rioteers, but gets plus X plus X instead of plus X plus naught. We've added in huge 9-3 Frog Spirit Yargle Glutton of Urborg and Galta Primal Hunger, the 12-12 that costs X less to cast, where X is the total power of creatures you control. With Mr. Orpheo, whenever we attack, we get to double target creature's power until end of turn, so having some big scary beasts that we could get to near or over 20 power will be huge. There's Rampy Big Creature Hybrid in Beanstalk Giant that we can adventure away to search our library for a basic land, putting it onto the field, with its power and toughness equal to the number of lands you control. An entirely Primal Storm that when attacks, exile the top card of each player's library. You may cast any number of spells from among them without paying their mana costs. There's Dragonborn Champion that says whenever a source you control deals 5 or more damage to a player, draw a card. And Shakedown Heavy that says when it attacks, defending player may have you draw a card. If they do, untap Shakedown Heavy and remove it from combat. There's Ulvenwald Oddity with Trample Haste and you can pay to transform it to Ulvenwald Behemoth that gives other creatures you control plus 1 plus 1 Trample and Haste. And Terra Stomper, the incounterable beast with Trample. We've added Grun the Lonely King, that if it was kicked to ETBs with 5 plus 1 plus 1 counters on, with it also doubling in power and toughness until end of turn whenever it attacks alone. And Quartz Rug Crusher, the Dino Beast with Trample, this is whenever one or more creatures you control with Trample deal combat damage to a player, create an XX Dino Beast creature token with Trample, where X is the amount of damage those creatures dealt to that player. The name of the game with this deck is to attack and smash, so having not only big creatures, but those creatures with things like Trample to get that damage through are key. For the last five, there's Phyto Titan that when dies, returns to the field tapped under its owner's control at the beginning of their next upkeep. An indestructible beast, Spearbreaker Behemoth, that you can pay just one to make target creature with power five or greater gain indestructible until end of turn. We have Green Staple Garrick's Pack Leader to draw us a card whenever another creature ETBs with power three or greater under our control. And Arnie Broken Brow that we can boast to change its power to one plus the greatest power amongst other creatures you control until end of turn. Finally, if those creatures die, we have Felden of the Third Path, that we can pay to create a copy of a creature card in our graveyard, which is now also an artifact, gains haste, and we sack it at the beginning of the next end step. 
We've seen those big creatures, now let's look at all the ways to attack and defend with them. First up is equipment creature Lizard Blades that has double strike or can be attached to another creature to give it double strike. And Blood Mist that says at the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control gains double strike until end of turn. There's exponential growth to double creature's power x times until end of turn. And Mage Slayer that says when equipped creature attacks, it deals damage equal to its power to player or planeswalker it's attacking. We've added prize fight to have target creature you control fight target creature you don't control, also creating you a treasure token. And ram through to have target creature you control deal damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. If your creature has trample, any excess damage goes through to your opponent instead. There's Fires of Yavimaya to give creatures you control haste, and Rhythm of the Wild to make your creature spells uncounterable and allow them to enter with haste. If one of your creatures die, we have Revenge Instant Fling to deal damage equal to sacked creature's power to target creature or player. And moving on to that defense, we have Kaya's Ghost Form to enchant creature and when it dies or is put into exile, return that card to the field under your control. There's Feign Death that says until end of turn, when this creature dies, return it to the field tapped under its owner's control with a plus one plus one counter on it. And Snakeskin Veil to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control, giving it Hexproof until end of turn. We have more protection in Supernatural Stamina to give target creature plus two plus naught until end of turn and when it dies return it to the field tapped under its owner's control. And Tamiyo's Safekeeping to give target permanent you control Hexproof and Indestructible until end of turn, gaining two life. There are lots of single protection in this deck which is key. We'll not be overloading our board with creatures so having plenty of ways to keep the one or two we have on the field will be very frustrating for our opponents to deal with. Finally, there's Ranger's Guile to give creature you control plus one plus one and hexproof until end of turn, and Withstand Death to give target creature indestructible until end of turn. As always, before we finish up with those lands, let's look at the best of the rest in this budget brew. First up is Harmonize to draw three cards, and Read the Bones to scry two, draw two cards, then lose two life. There's Rishkar's Expertise to draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. You may cast a spell with mana value five or less from your hands without paying its mana cost and Soul's Majesty to draw cards equal to the power of target creature you control. We have Warstorm Surge that says whenever a creature ETBs into your control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. And Glossification that enters tapped to enchant creature giving it plus 20, plus 20. There's Anger that if it's in our graveyard and you control a mountain, creatures you control have haste. An Archetype of Aggression to give all of your creatures trample with your opponent's creatures losing trample and unable to gain trample. On to removal we have Beast Within to destroy target permanent with its controller creating a 3-3 Beast token and Death Sprout to destroy target creature, also searching your library for a basic land card, putting it onto the field tapped. Yes, even more ramp, you love to see it. We have Go for the Throat to destroy target non-artifact creature and Putrefy to destroy target artifact or creature. For the final two we have Death's Presence, this is whenever a creature you control dies, but X 1 1 counters on target creature you control, where X is the power of the creature that died. An Essence Harvest, this says target player loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the greatest power amongst creatures you control. Finally, we're finishing up with all of those lands. Starting as always with those basics, we have 14 Forest, 8 Mountain and 8 Swamp, as this is a deck that runs very forest heavy and very light on those Swampies. Next up is Access Tunnel and Rogue's Passage for some colourless mana and unblockable creature options. We have Command Tower to add any of that Jund mana, an Exotic Orchard to add a mana of any colour an opponent's controls could produce. And finally, we have Evolving Worlds and Terramorphic Expanse that can both be tapped and sacked to search out a basic land, putting it onto the field tapped. Mr. Orpheo is a great new commander from SNC, and whilst it doesn't quite reach the EDH power level of Jetmere or Ognis, it can still be a very fun option to run, especially if you want to brew a deck that's all about the attack. There we have it, that is the $30 budget Mr. Orpheo deck deck. Thanks for watching and don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for all things MTG. Check out our link tree in the description below for all of our social media and affiliate links. For now though, I'm all tapped out, so I'll see you in the next video.